Good morning, everyone. It is a great pleasure for me to welcome you to our webinar organized by the Center for Aging and Healthcare Management Research and co-organized by CPCE Center for Pedagogic Research. I'm Oscar Chiu, a senior lecturer of PolyU CPCE. The topic of our webinar today is creating a technology-enhanced learning environment. We are very glad to invite Dr. Jalal Mohammed as our honorable speaker. Dr. Mohammed is a senior lecturer of University of Canterbury in New Zealand. He is an award-winning academic, health management and leadership specialist and consultant with nearly two decades of experience in the higher education and public health sectors. As a recognized leader in health education and health management, Dr. Mohammed has made very significant contributions to international organizations such as the United Nations Development Program and the World Health Organization. His significant work includes advising on major education and health projects across the Pacific region and globally focusing on strengthening health systems, improving health equity, and fostering innovation in public health strategies. It's time to start our webinar. Let's give a very big hand to welcome Dr. Mohammed. Dr. Mohammed, please. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you for that introduction. It's my pleasure to be here. It's my pleasure to um, speak to um, all of you from Hong Kong. Um, I The topic that I'm presenting on today is something that I'm really passionate about. Um, I teach in the area of health management and health leadership. Um, but what I've realized over my experience is it's important that we look at how we teach. Um, it's important that we consider how learners learn and then only then we are effective in our teaching practice, but only then is our programs um, going to be impactful as well. So with that, I'm going to share my screen um, and I'm doing something a little bit fancy today. I'm using a different software to present, so hopefully it all works out um, according to plan. But yes, today I'm speaking about designing an engaging technology enhanced learning environment. Um, so the, there's four elements to this presentation and I'm going to keep it quite practical. So the first element is rethinking the design. Um, the second element is a framework for action. Um, the third element um, that I'll speak about is engaging learners. And the fourth one is about creating um, communities of practice that will help foster and grow our um, practice in this area. So the first thing that I want to talk to you about is rethinking design. So prior to COVID, um, what we did online was very minimal. We used it often as repositories of information and we put information out um, in that online space, um, whether it be using learning management systems or other systems, you know, and it had information like dates for the lecture, some lecture uh, materials, some readings, um, but and some information around assessments. Often it was just a, you know, a repository. It was just stored there. Students would pull it out and then they would come to the classes, um, sometimes having read it, sometimes not having found the information because there was an overwhelming amount of information and sometimes wasn't really organized. But then came along COVID and COVID, and I call it the COVID learning and teaching um, experiment, because what happened was um, during COVID, um, we all went online. We had no choice. We had to go online. And in doing so, we um, engaged in a practice what we've termed as em emergency remote teaching. Um, we had no choice. We quickly went online. Um, we didn't really think about um, pedagogy. Uh, we didn't think about the design. We didn't think um, too much about the learner. It was something that we had to do in an emergency situation, get materials up, have continuity of learning and teaching activities within the university um, system. But 
something started to happen um, during that period as well. People started to embrace the online learning environment. Um, I had embraced it prior to that. I was always an advocate for online learning. So it was for me personally, it was great to see that there was other people that were enjoying the online um, learning environment, um, they were um, enjoying teaching online, um, but there were others that didn't. You know, they did prefer that traditional face-to-face -face class setting, so they still used it as an online repository. Um, and some of us, you know, became great instructional designers and we learned to do new things, use new software, um, to create um, innovative slides and presentations um, that help students learn. What did we learn from that experiment? Um, we learned that um, using it as a repository of information does not work for students. Students don't want to just go online just to search for information um, or just have an um, information dump um, online where they're just scouring through looking for stuff that they need for a particular session. What we also learned was that learners wanted some face-to-face -face interaction. More importantly, they wanted engagement. Um, and um, you can have engagement online as well, and you can have engagement face-to-face. -face. So they did yearn for um, some face-to-face -face interaction along with having stuff online. They noted that connections were important. So they wanted to connect with the lecturer. They wanted to con um, connect with their peers as well. So they wanted to learn by connecting to other people. They wanted to learn by engaging with other people. What we also learned was we don't need to be, uh, we don't need to have high production value. We don't need to have these fancy looking slides. They are good, we don't need them. We can do with um, simple slides as well, but you do have to consider the design. So that is what you know, came across, that you don't need high production value, but you do need good design. What we noticed was that there was a drop in attendance in face-to-face -face sessions post COVID. So students are telling us um, time and time again, that they do want to come to um, university, they do want face-to-face -face sessions, but they have to be valuable face-to-face -face sessions. And they've also told us that they want online sessions. So, you know, what they're really looking for is um, hybrid learning. They want the learning experiences online to be valuable to them. They want it to be engaging. And they also want that the same from face-to-face -face sessions. So our learning, um, our learners are changing. Their needs are changing. You know, as I said, they're looking for more hybrid experiences. They're looking for incorporation of technology. AI is playing a big part um, in how they do things as well. So we do need to consider how um, our learners' needs are changing and how we can accommodate them in the design of our courses. So, uh, you know, from all of those experiences, from um, literature, from research that other people have done, I've come up with five things that stand out when you are thinking about designing a um, technology-enhanced um, learning environment. So minimize the clicks. Students don't like to click here then click here and then go here and then go here to find something. You know, they should be minimal clicks. Once they get lost, they become disengaged. If they cannot find what they're looking for, if it's not easy to find, if there are too many clicks to find something, there is disengagement from the students. We also need um, to have an integrated approach. So often what happened in online learning environments um, was that people would put um, information up, you know, call it a folder and go lecture resources, put and create another folder and go tutorial resources, put another folder and go activities, put another folder and um, put assessments in there. And students then had to go into this folder to look for the lecture resources, go into another folder to look for tutorial resources, and then kind of understand that before they come to class. What we've understood from um, COVID and um, in designing technology enhanced learning environments is that we need a more integrated approach. So all of those resources to be put into either a weekly approach, a session approach or a modular approach. And I'll talk a little bit more about this and give you examples of, of this as well. 
Our learners, we know, are visual, especially when they're looking at things online. They do want visual elements. So that's one of the things that I've tried to keep into um, the design of online learning environments is that there should be lots of visual elements that keep the learner engaged, keep them um, interested in being online. You know, if they're disinterested, they become um, disengaged from the process as well. Having a consistent format allows learners to quickly find things and that helps to um, helps them to navigate the online um, learning environment, helps them to also be engaged with that process. And, uh, you know, we've traditionally said academics, we've said lecturers, you know, but when we're online, that role of that academic, the role of what we've traditionally seen as a lecturer who is the sage who stands up in front of the class and, you know, um, delivers a lecture while students um, uh, listen and take notes has changed and needs to change in that online learning environment as well. So you transition from being that lecturer to being a facilitator and you facilitate knowledge in that online space. So those were the five key elements that um, I have come up with to inform the design of technology enhanced learning environments. And I'm gonna show you examples of this as we progress through this presentation. Something else that is important when we are informing the design of technology enhanced learning environments is pedagogy. Three pedagogy that resonate with me, three learning theories is scaffolding um, of learning. So building learning from one session to another, building learning from one week to another, building learning from um, one learning artifact to another learning artifact. Also ensuring that there is constructive alignment. So each session has a goal or each week has um, a number of goals. Um, and then, you know, um, the readings that you give to students links to their goals, activities that they do link to those goals. This And that session links to the overall goals of the course and to the assessments as well. And that learning is also a constructivist process. So there's constructivism. So having lots of engagement, opportunities for peer learning and discussions so students can, or the learner can build knowledge as they engage with the learning resources. So those are some of the things that resonate with me in my practice. Um, but they will vary across your own courses. So if you aren't familiar with some of the learning theories, this is a great resource that um, uh, will give you an overview of some of the learning theories. And then you can kind of think about what resonates for you, what resonates for your learners and what resonates for your courses as well. So I'd recommend having a look at that if you're not too familiar with it. But I'm sure a lot of you have some learning theories um, in mind already or that you use in your own practice. Something that's also important in informing the design is that design must be intentional. If you are thinking about um, technology enhanced learning environments, there is time that is needed to create the resources, to create the learning artifacts. Um, then you also need the resources. So you need organizational resources um, to be able to do some of this and to do it well in a way that benefits the learner. I'll show you some of the different um, resources um, that can be created and you'll then you'll see um, that it does require a lot of time and dedication and organizational support to be able to do some of these things. Um, you also, I also love to have co-design in um, designing technology enhanced learning environments. Um, and that way you're informed by your students how they learn and how you, then we can in, incorporate that into your courses. Some programs, um, some areas may have professional um, bodies and associate, associations that require certain things such as practicals and all of that. And that also informs the design of um, technology enhanced learning environments as well. So it's good to have co-design um, in um, when you're thinking about um, creating online or hybrid learning experiences. 
Now, all of that, having an understanding on all of that led me to develop a framework um, to create um, technology enhanced learning environments. And that's the next thing that I'm going to share with you is a framework that I've come up with. So again, it's based on those principles of scaffolding of learning, of constructive alignment and constructivism. Um, it takes into account that learners learn differently. So some learners may be visual, some learners may be auditory, some learners may do things by, or learn by doing things. Um, it also takes into account that learning is contextual. So it'll be contextual to a particular profession, to a particular, um, particular setting that a learner is in, how they, you know, um, the, the particular organization. And learning is also personal. What I've noticed is that a lot of my students learn in different ways. You know, so I teach a lot of doctors and nurses and I see um, doctors, you know, logging into online learning um, systems and learning at two o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning if they're doing shift work. And that is a quiet time for them. So, you know, people learn differently and they learn um, at their own pace. So I've ensured that there is um, synchronous and asynchronous elements to um, the design of um, technology enhanced learning environments. And as I said earlier, the teacher's role is a facilitator or an inter interactive guide that helps the learner to build knowledge, build knowledge from different resources they engage in with build knowledge for their, um, from the engagement with their peers or the facilitator um, and build knowledge, take into account the context, the um, experiences and bring this all together. The other thing is that motivation is key to learning and then keep, you know, it, it's ensuring that you continuously motivate the learner through the activities that they're doing, through accomplishments and through tasks, through the resources as well. And the other thing is that learning is active and learning is a social um, process. So having lots of opportunities for engagement um, throughout the design of the um, course or the program. Now, we all know that frameworks, um, frameworks, I, I take frameworks as being meaningless unless you can action them. And on its own, this framework is something nice to look at, but how do you actually action it out? And that was my next question. You know, this framework is great, but, well, I think it's great because I created it, so I'm biased there. But I was thinking, how do you actually bring this into practice? So I came up with a template, and I'm going to go through each of the elements of this template. And this template then just gets you to think about um, the design of, uh, of your course and you know in light of scaffolding of learning or in light of constructivism um, in light of how your learners um, learn and how you're going to weave through that constructive alignment through throughout the course as well so you know i like to start off with a banner for the week i'll also explain um, why i brought about these elements and what's the rationale behind it an introduction for the week learning goals your resources, which either comprises of readings, recorded resources, supplementary resources, engagement sessions, activities, team tasks or practicals if you have them, a recap resource and a review and a checklist. So prior to all of that, it's important to give the learner an overview of the course. So this is two different courses that I um, have taught in um, different universities. On the left-hand side is a where it says quality in the health sector course. That's using the Canvas learning management system. On the right-hand side um, is the Moodle learning management system. So it will look differently based on learning management systems and what they can do, but the elements are still the same. It is to give the students an overview of the course so they know what this course is about, you know, key contact details. What are some of the assessments of the course? and to also um, signpost any other important elements of the course that you want them to be aware of. What I also have is a welcome video. And it's important to have a welcome video in an online learning environment because it helps to build 
connections with the students. Remember, you know, what we learned from that COVID experience is that students want connection. They just don't want a screen or a repository of files. They do want to know that there is someone behind that, that there is a facilitator, that there are other students. So video helps to do that, you know, and you'll see that I've got that welcome video. It's a video of me. I welcome them to the course. I point out, you know, any important um, elements to the course. What are some of the expectations of the course as well? And that starts to build that connection between me and the learner. And then it makes me approachable to the students as well. They don't see it as someone behind a screen. They can actually put a face, a voice to the person. They get a sense of my personality. I bring that across in the videos. And then they, you know, they have that, they start, I start to build that connection with the students. So if anything goes wrong, the student can always reach out. They feel comfortable reaching out to me. The next thing is, you know, that I give them an overview of the course, what this course is about. Again, there's two different courses here. So um, in that light blue is that quality course using Canvas, and it's just got those different um, sessions throughout the um, semester. On the right hand side, this is a um, health leadership and ma um, management course. Um, you know, on, you see those um, headers there on, on the left that links to each of those modules. There is, you know, information about the course, the learning goals. There's a flip book there. So right be below where it says course information and resources, I've embedded a flip book. Um, and that's quite easy to do, you know, creating flip books. It kind of just, it mixes it up for the student instead of just downloading a PDF and looking at it. Here they can click through this flip book. This flip book tells them everything about the course. And of course, I also have a um, video that introduces it. So that gives the students an overview of the course. It lays out the expectations. It signposts any important um, elements of the course, tells them about the assessments and where to find all the information regarding the course. The next part is, you know, according to that template, I have a banner. And the banner just serves, you know, as a signposting. It's a signage. It says, hey, you're, you know, you're in session one. This session is about basic concepts of quality care. It's just very simple. It just lets them know where they are in that online learning environment. And all of these things, then the next parts of the template, which is the introduction, the um, learning goals, they're all on one page. So it is minimal clicks. They can scroll through that page and they'll they just go down and have a look at it. So each week or each session, I have an introduction. Again, this is based, um, this just signposts, hey, welcome to the week. During this week, our, um, the goals of this week are this. Um, you need to complete this by the end of this week. You need to do this. There's an assessment due um, and so on and so forth. Um, so it is signposting. Again, I do this in a number of ways. I like to mix it up. Sometimes I have a voice over slide. Um, sometimes I have my um, face as well where I speak about things. And I'll show you two examples of how I do it. It just keeps it interesting rather than doing it one way all the time. Um, and I, you know, the feedback that I've gotten from students is that they like to watch an introduction video. It gives them an overview of that session or of that week. It signposts anything that is upcoming in that week or anything that is due. Um, and it just tells them what they need to do to, in order to successfully complete that week. So here Think is the of third what video. is meant by quality and examine attributes of quality in relation to the New Zealand health sector. So then you may be asking yourself, what is quality? I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce the concept of quality, but we will come back to this concept through the session. So that's one session. Um, video and that is engagement just a through, over video. Um, the session resource. Um, I'm sorry, I've just gone too far. And sometimes this is what happens with technology. Um, it um doesn't allow a video to play <laughs> so in this video i'll just talk to you see my face and i welcome them to um the session i tell them what it's about my apologies for that one not playing 
So once they've had an introduction to the week and they you have signposted um, what um, they need to do in that week, what are some of the learning um, aims of that week, I always like to put up what are the learning goals. Now, why I find this important is two perspectives. For me, it tells me what this week's learning goals are. And any resource that I um, add for the students for this particular week um, has to align with these goals. So there has to be constructive um, alignment. So it is signposting for me as well that everything that is in this week should relate to those learning outcomes. For the students, it tells them that when they engage with the resources, this is what they're learning from the week. They're learning about learning outcome one, um, two, three, and six. So it frames their engagement with those um, learning resources. It tells them how this week relates to the overall learning goals um, and learning outcomes of the course as well. And when they're revising for exams, for assessments, they can go back. Okay, this assessment links to um, learning outcomes one and three. So I can go back to weeks one, weeks four, and week six, which deal with learning outcomes one and three, and, you know, recap or revisit those um, sessions when I'm doing the assessments. So it is signposting and it is um, that constructive alignment and scaffolding of learning um, that um, is factored in here as well. Once I've, um, you know, put up the learning goals, the next thing is that I have resources for the students. And these resources are um, um, one of three things, or all of these three things in most cases. They'd be core readings, so things that um, the students uh, will engage with that will help them to understand the core concepts that for that week or for that session. Then I have, if they, some students, you know, as students learn at different paces, they learn um, um, quite differently. So some students, you know, when they engage with the core readings, they've understood everything, but other students haven't. So I also put up some supplementary resources, and these are optional resources. They could be readings, videos, or links to websites that students can then have a look at um, if they haven't understood the key concepts or the learning goals from the core readings. They also use these resources for their assessments. I'm not, I've, you know, when I talk to the students, they say, you know, I've, I've engaged with the readings, but I also went and had a look at the supplementary resources because they were helpful from that assessment perspective as well. And the other thing that I have is recorded resources. So this is um, a mini lecture um, or a animated video or a voiceover presentation that is no longer than 10 minutes because that is the cutoff, you know, for students' attention that I found. You know, if you have something that is between five to 10 minutes, they will watch it. If you have something that is 20 minutes or 30 minutes or long, you know, I find that a lot of students will not watch those videos. So I try and keep these two very key fundamental concepts around that particular week. I'll give you, an, I'll show you an example of this as well. So this is an example of a health leadership course. And this is a course that also takes into account indigenous leadership. So in New Zealand, we have um, our indigenous people, which is the Maori. And so this session dealt with Maori leadership. So there were some core readings that they um, engage with. But also, if you haven't understood it, then here are some supplementary readings that you can engage with to understand these um, concepts or the concepts around Maori health leadership better. Then there are recorded resources. So this is from one of my undergraduate courses around um, health quality. So this is... Um, a recording that I have created, an animated recording that I've created. And I found that the students love animated videos, you know, so it is something different. It takes a lot of time to create. I think this was about a five minute video, but it took me three days, three full days of work to create this video. So it is very resource intensive to create it. You've got to create the script, you've got to create the animation, you've got to do the recording, and then you've got to bring it all together um, into a short five minute video. So when I spend that much of time doing something, it is around a concept that isn't gonna change. 
So it is around those fundamental concepts that I can reuse this video over and over again. Um, and, you know, I don't include anything that is um, um, bound, that is going to change, you know. So I don't include organization names. I don't include any of those things that might change. Um, that I include the contemporary elements or how these concepts are applied. I include in the engagement sessions that I will come to. So I'll show you an example of it, and hopefully this time the video works. This is an animated video around some of the um, key concepts around the, this is in the first week of this quality management course. So I wanted them to understand the attributes of quality in a healthcare setting. A number of attributes characterize quality of healthcare services. These are access to services, technical competence, equity, effectiveness, efficiency, continuity of care, safety, patient-centeredness, and amenities. Different groups such as healthcare providers, patients, and insurers attach different levels of importance to these attributes and define quality differently. So that was uh, around quality. So that was, you know, um, an animated video that talks about those attributes. And I do this across um, my courses. And I do this around key fundamental um, concepts. So once they've engaged with the readings, once they've engaged with the recorded resources, now it's time to bring the class together and have an engagement session. So these engagement sessions could be either over Zoom or an in-class face-to-face session. I mix it um, um, across my courses. So in some courses, I'll have it over um, Zoom. Sometimes I'll have it in class as well. Um, so this is when we talk about those, what have they read? What have they understood? You know, they get to share um, what they've understood around that particular session. They get to talk to their classmates around what they've learned, compare, you know, learn from their classmates. Um, so we have that discussion and then we get, then we go deeper and then we um, apply it, apply it to um, contemporary healthcare settings. We apply it to their own context. We apply it um, to the health sector generally. So this is where you get to kind of um, bring those discussions, bring that engagement um, and have those um, deeper conversations and um, discussions with the class. And this works really well once they've done the readings. Of course, some students don't do the readings, but most students I find, if you have a short video, will watch those videos at least before coming to these sessions. And then once they've done, um, once they've engaged, I always have um, an activity that they can do. So these are most of the time, they are formative um, activities. So they don't count towards their final grade. Um, and I like to vary them. So if one week I'm doing a discussion forum and next week I might do a worksheet or a crossword or an online activity, Sometimes I have online games using Kahoot and other software. And, you know, you can also have quizzes. So I like to keep it interesting. I like to vary it. So this is um, um, an opportunity for the students to test their knowledge and what they've read, um, do an activity, um, either engage with their peers or do a self-review activity. And if they find that they haven't been able to answer those questions, then they go back and um, re-engage with those readings and those recorded resources or those supplementary resources. So here is an example of, um, this is simple worksheets um, or some um, questions that they can discuss as well. So here they just go through these questions. These were self-review activities. Other times I have um, discussion forums as well, where they're able to discuss this with their um, peers as well. And uh, what I always do is at the end of each week, I bring these I, um, as a facilitator. And I said, you know, earlier on that your role changes in an online learning environment. Um, you move from that traditional academic to a facilitator. And part of that role of being a facilitator is to bring together the all of the common threads, either, you know, 
that have um, been discussed in that engagement session, that have been presented in the recorded resource or the readings. You know, you bring all of this knowledge um, together, you weave them together to kind of say, hey, you know, over the course of this week, this is what the learning goals were. This is what we've learned. This is what we you read about. This is how it all comes together. This is how it's applied in the health sector. So I always do a um, recap um, each week um, or each session. And a recap is very simple. Again, um, the video is not going to play because... Um, I'm not sure. It's a YouTube video that I embedded into this. So I might not have done that correctly. My apologies. But here, you know, it's just going and saying, this is um, this is what this week was about. This is what you've learned. This is what you should have read. If you haven't understood any of this, go back and have a look at the um, readings or go back and have a look at the recorded resource to further your knowledge. And at the end of the week, I have a review or a checklist. Um, and I do this in many ways in my undergraduate courses. I like to make it a little bit more visual. So you, on your left-hand side, um, you see a visual checklist. In other courses, there's a to-do list that they can check off as they go um, through these things. And once they check it off, then it tells them, you know, you've completed, you know, 10% of the course or you've completed 90% of the course if you've completed 100% of that course, you know, as they progress and they keep marking things off. So and that kind of motivates them as well. You know, when you can see, okay, you're progressing through the course, you're 10% through the course, you're 20% through the course now, you're 50% through the course, you know, it keeps them going, you know. Um, so that is quite important as well. And different learning management systems will allow you to do it differently as well. So that was that framework for action. And um, you know, I use that across um, my courses. I change it around as well. So sometimes, you know, um, some courses will require certain things like practical elements. So then I um, tweak that um, that template that I showed you um, based on the courses. And that template is very um, agile and very flexible. So if you're using it for your own courses, um, you can uh, modify it based on the needs of the courses. Not all courses are alike and that one template will not fit all courses as well. So it does need a bit of tweaking. And I'm happy to have conversations with anyone that does want to use the template. Um, and I can have a conversation with you around how to adapt it for your course. Now, all of this is great, but as I said, you need to engage the learners. So the, those elements were around the design, but you also have to deliver a course. So that delivery um, changes a bit as well when you are thinking about an engaging te um, technology enhanced learning environment. So if we look at in you know um, delivery, you have to rethink delivery. So you have to make learning relatable, ensure collaboration and engagement, in anchor innovation to learning. So create all of these innovative slides, innovative, um, use these innovative tools, but, you know, anchor it to learning. It's not just about the tool and what it can do. It's about how it links to what you are trying to do, how it links to the goals of the session or the goals of the week or the goals of the course. Um, ensure that learning is um, social and ensure that there is a sense of community as well. Now, some of the um, more practical things when you're designing a um, technology enhanced learning environment, make sure that the workload is realistic. So can students um, achieve these things? So keep the activities simple. If you are getting them to do big activities in on top of assessments, it may become too much for the students and they may become disengaged. If they're reading too many things, if they're engaging with too many resources, again, they may find it overwhelming and disengage from the process. So what I like to do is have one core reading, one or two core readings, give them other supplementary readings that they can decide whether to read or not to read, and also ensure that those videos are always uh, you know, under 10 minutes. Even the recap videos, I keep them under five minutes or around that five minute mark. Ensure that there's intrinsic motivation. Ensure that you pace learning. So scaffolding of learning, but pace, um, pace it. 
um, so they can get through the course without being too overwhelmed. Ensure that you give feedback throughout the process, not only um, feedback at summative um, assessment opportunities, but also formative feedback throughout the course. Have good guidelines. So, you know, I always have a document, uh, which is a course guide, which has all of this information. So if ever they get stuck, that they can go back and have a look at that document and ensure that there is constructive alignment throughout the course. You know, create an online presence. So if you're not there online, the students are not going to be there online. So the facilitator has to be there. The facilitator has to be seen online. They have to, you have to have an um, online presence. And that motivates students to have an online presence. That motivates them to be there as well. They know, hey, Jalal is there, you know, online. I can see him there. He's answering questions, you know. He's, you know, I can see him in those videos. Um, and, you know, that gets them motivated and that creates an online presence for them as well. So, again, I do that through, I post weekly announcements. So, I have those weekly introdu introduction videos, but, you know, everyone is different. Some people don't like to watch videos. Some people like to read. So, we know that our learners are different. If you look at the Vox model, um, you know that some are visual learners, some are auditory learners, some uh, learn by reading and writing. So I have different formats for things as well. So I do put a weekly announcement saying, hey, welcome to week one. This week is about this. Here are some of the key things about this week. Any And signpost um, to them anything else about that week. Um, and that goes out as an announcement. On you know, Then the introductory video. Often in that weekly announcement, I will go, hey, also, you know, there's more in the more about this week in the introductory video. So be sure to watch the intro, uh, introductory video for that week. I have formative activities. I give um, ensure that you know there is timely feedback and good communication with the students. So I use a lot of discussion forums and question and answer forums online. So it gets them in the habit of being online. And it does also um, facilitate Going online is a lot of work. So you do, you know, want to cut down on some of your work as well. Often students will email you and ask you similar questions. So I do try and get them in the habit of using the online question and answer forums. So if one student is asking a question and another student has that same question, they can see that that question has been asked and already answered. So they don't need to email you about it. Um, and that cuts down on some of that administrative element, but it also um, facilitates communication online. It facilitates engagement as well. Get students um, online, it gets them to be there and to ask questions in that space. And while they're asking questions, they're obviously going to be online, so they're going to be looking at some of the resources as well. So it creates a presence for the learner as well, in addition to the facilitator. Think about our learners, they do learn differently. We do have um, um, different models that state, you know, um, learners learn differently. We have learners with disabilities as well. So think about um, universal design, think about using alt text. So if you're using lots of images, there are learners who have visual or hearing impairment. So you, used to, you think about closed captioning ticks for video. So if they do have um, hearing um, disabilities, then they can also read the um, text. Um, alt text allows the um, auditory readers to um, read out what this image is about. So that helps with anyone with um, visual um, disabilities as well. So use different formats. So you've got readings, you've got videos, you know, um, uh, you know, it just accommodates a wide range of learning um, needs as well. In, in addition to giving feedback, I think it's always important for um, academics to receive feedbacks. Um, often our university systems will do um, end of um, semester feedback. Um, and what this means is that um, you don't have an opportunity to make any changes for the current cohort of students. So I like to do two other feedbacks. One, you know, we have 12 week um, structures for our course. So one in um, one at the end of weeks one to four. Then again, 
um, one at the end of weeks five to nine, and then the end of course survey at the end of week 12. The two internal surveys that I do allows me to then um, understand my current cohort of learners and make any changes that will be beneficial to their learning as well. The other thing is be innovative, be creative, let your juices flow. I think when you're going online, um, you can do a lot of different things. So instead of putting up a traditional link, you can use barcodes to do links. You can, you know, use animated videos instead of um, voiceover presentation. So be very creative and innovative. And when students see that you're innovative and creative in your um, online learning environment, they are uh, more likely to be engaged as well. And just to do a recap, you know, um, some of the principles that I think about is ensuring good design, that there's intentional design, be innovative, focus on the learner and their needs, create online presence and engagement, and create a sense of community when you are in an online or a technology enhanced learning environment. And just my final part to the presentation, is create communities of practice because sometimes you you don't you only know what you know and you only know what you've read but there are lots of people doing very innovative stuff in this um, space um, and what I suggest is you know that you create your own communities of practice. Um, so as um, Oscar mentioned, you know, I do a lot of work in the Pacific. So during COVID, I created the Pacific Online Learning and Teaching Network. And we discuss, you know, we bring together experts and people who are in this space creating these, uh, you know, amazing online learning environments to share what they've done. You know, often you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can, you know, adapt ideas from what pe other people have done. You can learn from other people, but sometimes there aren't platforms around to do this. So, you know, I noticed there wasn't one for the Pacific. So I created this network and we've been doing a number of seminars um, around different things around, you know, that will upskill um, practitioners in this space. Um, if you want to join, we finished for the year. We don't have any more sessions, but we'll be starting up um, again in February. Um, send me an email and I can put you on the mailing list. But what I'd love to see is that you create one for Hong Kong as well, you know, where you can, you know, have um webinars around specifically around learning and teaching and some of the innovation innovation and good practices that are going on um, and that would be great for your own context because you know um each country you know each region learners do learn differently so how um, learners learn in new zealand is you know is different from how they learn in the pacific and it's different to how they learn in asia as well so some of that context specific stuff you can um, you know bring about from your own communities and practice and develop that understanding Thank you for um, listening to me. That was my presentation. I'm happy to um, receive any comments or if you've got any questions, happy to answer those as well. Yeah. Yes, I'm uh, uh, very thankful to Janelle for the very inspiring, interesting and stimulating uh, presentation. On behalf of everyone here, I would like to thank Dr. Mohammed for your very insightful, interesting, and stimulating presentation. I would also like to express our appreciation of your most enlightening talk. Now we are going to have our Q&A session.